I always feel like Bruce Willis when I'm doing these types of videos because at the beginning of the video I look all nice and at the end I look all busted up. Well hello my lovely nestlings and welcome to today's video which is going to be eye swatches and the review of the newest palette by Nomad Cosmetics, the Royal Europe. Uh, I got this palette in PR and when it landed on my doorstep I squealed. <laughs> And if you're new, welcome. My name is Nikki. I'm from the Netherlands, hence the accent. I'm also slightly orcish, relatively vintage. I love spooky stuff, makeup, and being creative. The slightly orcish means I'm green. I'm a light to light, medium, warm-ish. All of the relatively vintage means I'm 47. And I also have ADHD and I'm autistic. So you get, I don't know, heaps. Heaps, I tell you. Never mind. I'm a little bit in a silly mood. I'm just giddy about this eyeshadow palette. So let me show you uh, the close-ups of it. You get 15 eyeshadow shades. You get a combination of mattes and multi-chromes. And this is the first time that they have done this type of color story, but also the multi-chromes. And today I'm just going to show you what the colors look like on my skin. Tomorrow's video you will want to watch. Honestly, because there I'm going to show you the five looks that I created with this palette. And the reason that I say you want to watch that video is because I work differently with colorful eyeshadows than most other people do. I want to blend as little as possible, but I still want to have a blended look. And I will show you my techniques for that tomorrow. So make sure to tune in then. But as I said, today is eye swatches. Now, a little bit about this palette uh, the destination is royal europe and it says here the grand palaces of europe invite us into a fairy tale fantasy with their expensive estates imposing architectures and collections of incomparable family jewels and treasures M meandering meandering I don't know the word, I'm sorry. Uh, through the palatial rooms richly decorated with ornate designs and heirlooms of bygone eras, one can imagine a glittering queen holding court or bejeweled nobility enjoying an imperial ball. From the grand staircases and hall of mirrors to the Fabergé eggs and crown jewels, visiting these impressive destinations lets you feel like royalty even if just for a day. I can tell you I have actually been to the Royal Palace in Amsterdam and uh, it's very cool to watch that. So if you get a chance to visit a palace, definitely recommend. This palette will retail for more than their regular 15 pen palettes. I don't know exactly the retail price yet, but it will be listed down below. Um, and that is because of the multi-chromes. Multi-chromes are just more expensive to make. So that is the reason. Uh, in a minute, I am going to swatch all these eyeshadows on my eyelids. I'm not going to use an eyeshadow base because an eyeshadow base is less emollient and basically wet than a foundation or a concealer is. So I'm just going to use a concealer underneath to basically help my eyes in this process that we're going to embark on. And I'm going to pack the eyeshadows on all of them. I'm also not going to use a glitter base. So... Yeah, I am using a glitter base in tomorrow's video though. And I explain why at the end of this video. Because at the end of this video, I'm also giving you my opinion on the palette. How I felt that it performed. Some of my techniques, some of my tips. So yeah, time step for that will be listed down below in the description box as well. But yeah guys, I'm just so so excited to dig into this palette. And I hope you are too. So let me prep my eyelids. You grab a drink and a snack. And we'll meet back here in just a moment. To get on with the eye swatches. Eyes are prepped. I just used the concealer from Catrice. Uh, uh, it's the, what is it? The Clean ID High Coverage Concealer in the shade 10. I do have a tiny bit of staining. Uh, so, and, and still a little bit of eye pencil. In my eyes. So... Uh, for brushes, I am going to use kind of two of the same brushes. So I have here one from BK Beauty, the 203. And I have one from Nabla, which are kind of, you know, those type of packing brushes. And then for shimmers, I have basically two, uh, two very, very similar brushes. I have one from Unearthly Cosmetics, the UC817. 
And I have one from Yesup, the 233, the one from Yesup I've had for years and I've also used for years for shimmers, but they are relatively the same brushes. Uh, in the makeup look video, I'm actually using the one from Unearthly Cosmetics, but I just wanted to have two of the similar so I could kind of clean them off in between with uh, some ISO clean. And uh, yeah, oh, I actually think I'm going to go like this for the mattes. So we can basically see the gradient on both eyes. So I'm going to start with that shade, which is called Schoenbrunn Palace. And I'm just going to pack it on. I'm not going to care about any fallout. I'm just going to pat it on my eyelid. As I said in the beginning of the video, I am an olive. So shades on me will look maybe a little bit different then shades on someone else. I'm also not going to really blend it out, but I'm going to tap it a little bit higher so you can kind of see how nicely it blends. Here's the shade Sean Brun Palace. Next, I'm going to go to the shade Neptune Fountain. I'm actually using the same brush because in this it does not really matter. So Neptune Fountain is a dark Almost a neutrally brown. Just going to tap that on. It is a very nice deep dark brown and you can use this shade to darken up any of the others if you want to. I'm just going to kind of tap it out a little bit higher and again see how easy that blend is. No effort whatsoever the shade Neptune Fountain. Uh, the first one I'm going to go to is Villanov uh, Palace, which is the lighter kind of tealy green. Again, I'm going to tap it out just a little. I'm not worried about any patchiness basically in the blend. I just want you kind of to see the color a little bit when it's blended out a little bit more. Here's the shade Villanov Palace. Next shade is called King's Room, which is the darker teal, the darker green. And you can see that there is a nice depth difference between the two. the shade King's Room. Next I'm going to go to Palace of Versailles, which is a blue, a lighter blue. Palace of Versailles. Then next is Hall of Mirrors. You can kind of see them pulling a hint more teal on me, a little bit more green on me. That has to do with uh, the undertone, but also with the concealer that I've used because the concealer is also a little bit olive leaning. Hall of Mirrors. Next is uh, Buckingham Palace, which is the darkest purple. And again, it blends out uh, very, very easily. Uh, Buckingham Palace. Then we're going to go to shade the ballroom. the ballroom. Let's go to Pina Palace or Pe Pena, Pena Palace, I don't know, which is the lighter red, 
which has a hint of pink in it or blue maybe it's almost a little bit more like a, I don't know berry red Pena Palace, Pena Palace, I don't know. <laughs> then the last of the mats is called Great Hall, which is a darker red. And this is actually, these are the shades that I wore in the look uh, in the intro. And also I will be wearing that in the review part of the video. Here is Great Hall. Okay, and now we are going to go to the shimmers. Uh, first of the shimmers is the shade Imperial Crown. I'm not using a shimmer primer. In the looks video, I am using a shimmer primer. So let's see what this one does. The base is still wet though, so it will grip the, the shimmer very well. Picks up very well on the brush. I don't know if I can show you the shift that it has though. It has a slight green, a green flip in it. The next shade that I'm going to use is the shade called Royal Orb. Which kind of has a green to blue. I can show you. And if you put these on top of a matte shadow, you can um, change the flip or not not necessarily the flip but if you put this one on top of uh, the blue for instance you pull out a little bit more of the blue that is in the in the shade the next shade is bleu de france and this is probably my favorite shade in the palette and this has a teal and purple flip and i love this shade so so much You can also use your finger for these or sponge tip applicator. I actually use a sponge tip applicator in the video as well and it works very, very well. But oh, I hope you can kind of see the shift that it has on camera. The shade Bleu de France. Next, I'm going to go to the shade uh, St. Edward's Room, or St. Edward's Room, which is a blue to purple. And probably another color in there as well. But I'm very bad at describing, <laughs> describing these. What is it? Blue, purple, pink shift, something like that? Looking at it. And I'm very messy, I know, but I don't care. Because I'm going to wash my face when I'm done anyway. So, the shade St. Edward's Crown. When I'm done, I will also show you uh, the swatches on my hand so you can see the shifts a little bit better. Okay, last shade is going to be the shade Royal Treasure. And that was also the shimmer that I used in the last look. And you saw on my eyes in the intro. And this one has pink to, I think, orange to green. And pink, yellow and green. But on me, a lot of the time, this shows up as more pink. But I kind of hope you can see some of the shifts. Mm. 
this is uh, the last shade of the video and before I give you over to my past self for the review part I forgot to mention that these shadows do stain the red ones so these they do stain at least on me now I don't mind that at all uh, but if you do at least you know um, if I wash my face well in the evening clean it well and then clean it again in the morning the staining is practically gone so yeah I did not have any irritation with the eyeshadows whatsoever but at least you know it's because they use the vegan dyes and vegan dyes can stain your eyelids but this was it for the eye swatching part I'm going to give you over to my past self those were all the eye swatches and I am going to tell you my opinion on the palette how it performed especially when creating a makeup look so this is actually the last look of the multiple looks video that will go online tomorrow because at the end of the day it it's nice to know how a shadow packs on an eye but it's more important to know how it performs when you're blending when you're layering how the shimmers perform and all that and that's what we're going to go into now let's just start from the outside in because I can this this cut out part it's so cool I love the way that they did that it just feels very new and different and I really really love that and then <clears throat> the first time that I opened her up I squealed because Nomad Cosmetics has never done this types, these types of multi-chromes before and I was like oh, they have put my most favorite multi-chrome color in a palette and that's actually this one this is a color that I love so 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 much yes <laughs> The color story I really enjoy. I love the way that they have laid it out in a monochromatic rose. It's just very pleasing for my eye. It also makes me want to go monochromatic. I love doing monochromatic looks. So actually in the looks that you will see tomorrow. I did focus on the rose of the mattes. But I kind of switched it up with the shimmers. Because I wanted to show you that they pair with all with everything together let's start with the performance of the matte shadows the matte shadows in here are very pigmented they are on the softer side they do have quite a bit of, of kick up in the pan now I don't mind that too much but if you do tap off your brush well and do your eyes first because depending on the brush that you are using you you can create fallout it happened to me and I don't mind cleaning it up but just so that you know um, the shadows are very pigmented they are still blendable and you can layer a bunch of shadows on top of each other now what I do have to say is I love the gradient that they have done so that they've basically done a lighter and then a deeper version of the same type of shade I do have to say that in I think it was the second look it was either the second look or the third look I think it was the second look that I started actually with the darkest color and blended it out with the lighter color yeah it was the green one when I do that because the shadows are pretty pigmented there is not enough gradient for me to get a nice flow like I have today with kind of the depth that I desire I have to start with the lighter shade tap it on a light layer maybe build it up a little bit more a little bit lower and then darken it up with the darker shadow that works best for me if I do not especially here in the green part but also here there isn't enough difference in the color depth to create that gradient it just looks like the same color and today for me it doesn't look like the same color I can see that I have depth here and that was just created with these two mattes I did not pull any other shadow in today uh, matte wise so that's just something to note if you want to know how I work with well literally this palette make sure that you are subscribed and tune in for tomorrow's video because I show you exactly how I make this color story work for me let's go to the multi-chromes then so the first thing that I noticed with these is they swatch terribly which I don't I don't care how they swatch I care how well I can pick them up with a brush and how nice they go on my eye these shimmers are not as hard pressed as in their previous palette my brush picked it up very very well and the brush that I actually use is it's a newer one from um Unearthly Cosmetics from her new set this is the one that I'm trying out right now and that worked perfectly with this and it's the UC817 and it is a brush like this which is just a flatter you can use it as a concealer brush as well but this one picks up beautifully 
the brushes that I tried, basically the flatter brushes that I tried work beautifully with this formula. I did use shimmer primer underneath, but that is just because I want to get maximum stick. I noticed that the shadows were a little bit fallouty, so I just wanted to have them stick where I put them. But shine wise, they don't need them. I do feel that they pack a little bit more of a punch. It's a little bit easier for me at least to get them opaque instantaneously if I have a shimmer primer underneath. And the shimmer primer that I use is a gel based primer. This is the one from Death and Candy, but this is what I use, a gel based primer. They stay on for me all day and the shifts are just so, so pretty. You can play with them as well. So if you put this one on top of the blue, it pulls a little bit more teal. If you put it on top of this shade, it pulls a little bit more towards the pinky purple side or on top of that shade, it pulls a little bit more purple. And I really love to play with that. And they all have a shift. So the one that has kind of the least shift is this one, which is... It has a green to orange in it, but it's maybe not as noticeable uh, if you see it like that. I usually don't really go for a lot of jewel toned colors because on me, me being also kind of a muted olive, which means that the colors that I'm wearing here, the more muted colors look a little bit better on me than if I go uh, neon, for instance, I can wear neon, no problem, but neon takes me over. So if I have a, a shadow or a color that's very punchy, like for instance, a color like this, when I hold this one to, to next to my face, you see this, but I kind of fade away a little bit. So it is also the reason that I stay away from a lot of uh, jewel toned eyeshadows because the eyeshadow look tends to take me over. With this though, they are muted enough in color that I can still make them work. Me being an olive as well, shadows can, colors can warp on me and they did not really. So yes, this one pulled a little bit more green because I am green, but still this stayed blue. This one pulled a little bit teal on me, a little bit more green, but that's also what happens to me a lot of the time. But when I layer it on top of the blue, it's better. At least that's how I feel. Uh, I could layer a bunch of shadows on top of each other. I, if, if you want extreme depth, you may need to pull in a deep dark brown or even a black if you really want that punch that darker shadow for me this has a lot of depth this has enough depth um, this one for me could have even been a little bit deeper so a very deep dark brown that I could basically have used with the other shadows as well it creates a nice depth but it would have given even more depth than it has but Overall, this, this palette, I have my favorites from Nomad Cosmetics. And when I saw this one, I was like, it's like, it's like Felicia, who's the, who's one of the owners, basically went into my brain and pulled out the colors that I love and created a palette and put in multi-chromes with the ones that I love the most. That's kind of how it feels. And this is very much a palette. And I say this often with Nomad Cosmetics, the palettes that they release are also palettes that I would buy even if I was not on their PR list. Now, if you follow me, you know that I'm on a no-buy currently, right? However, if I hadn't gotten this palette in PR, it would have broken my no-buy it would have. I also know that this palette is a little bit more expensive than the regular pricing of their 15 pen palettes. And that is because of the multi-chromes. If you do want to shop at Nomad and save some money, you can use my affiliated code Nikki Raven 10 to save you 10%. What is happening? I don't know. Uh, the palette will launch on Tuesday uh, around 12 a.m. EST. And... I cannot wait to hear your reaction on this palette. I cannot wait for you guys to see this palette in action. I'm not, I'm not um, an expert on multi-chromes, but I do have a bunch. These are so, so easy to use. They, and the best part was that they pick up on my brush so well and they transfer on my eyes so well and I was blown away I have tried cheap multi-chromes I've tried expensive multi-chromes I've tried smooth ones I've tried textured ones and I have to say that these are very much 
among my favorites. And this is a palette that I just, I know that I will reach into quite a lot, especially for that one. And also, this is also one of my favorites. But this one, I think, is my most favorite shade in the palette. And yeah, that is going to be it. Uh, I know a lot of my friends here online have gotten this palette in PR. So your feed will probably be flooded with Nomad Cosmetics palettes. That's why I uploaded uh, this video first. Because I know that everyone will do their multiple looks first. I just wanted to do the eye swatch video first so you could see that in action as well. Hear my thoughts on it. And if you want to see my looks, uh, get my tips on how I work with this palette because I do work differently with color than most people do. Then just make sure that you are subscribed and tune in tomorrow for my multiple looks video. And I just, oh, I had so much fun with this palette. So let me know down below if my video helped. Let me know if you're going to tune in tomorrow as well. And let me know if you are excited or if you are skipping. Let me know down below. And then that is going to be it for today. Thank you so, so much for watching. I'm going to wish you a fantastic day, a fabulous evening. May your foundation always match your neck. And I will see you tomorrow for my multiple looks video, which honestly is the only one that you need to watch. Bye guys. Thank you.